All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are back on my 1981 GMC G1500 van. This thing is uh, going full boogie. So what we're, what we're gonna do is have um, the usual suspects, Oliver, a uh, new friend of ours that is gonna come do the paint correction because this is original paint. So we're gonna try and bring it up a little bit. And I wanna get these fenders spot welded on. So we're gonna show you how to spot weld on these G10 van fenders, how to prep it, how to line it up, and what kind of tweaks we're gonna make into the panels as well as hoping to get to uh, painting the front end. I got some color match spray paint done up at Lord Co. And uh, we're gonna see if it's color matched to the original paint after it gets polished and try and get this van looking like a van again. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, if you're local to where I am, like Greater Vancouver, this is your guy for paint um, and all other detailing. I didn't realize, but he is like full mobile, has even like generators, water tanks. He could be out in the middle of the desert and be able to do paint correction and be able to do uh, full interior detailing. Like this guy's just, he's just wicked. Um, he showed me both one and two stage polishes so I could choose between the two. One's double the price because he has to do it twice but um, I just went with a one stage polish um, and he just went over the entire van and uh, and brought it up with the products that he brought. So um, yeah, if, if, uh, if you've got an old original paint vehicle, I highly recommend paint correction because it is incredible the transformation that you can get out of a vehicle that's, you know, I, what is this thing? This is a 1981, so that's, you know, 40 years old paint. And uh, he's got it coming up, you know, pretty much like how the factory would be, other than, you know, obviously the blemishes that uh, cannot be taken out with a polish, right? But just, I couldn't be happier. So uh, just wanted to give a big shout out. Thank you so much, Oliver. Um, man, just... Uh, <laughs> you're you're on speed dial. <laughs> Okay, check it out. So, this, where it stands right Still a bunch of spot welds that we can grind down. These are just sitting on here. Like, they're, they're not at all locked down. So what we're gonna do first is pop these off and we're gonna prep all the areas where the spot welds will be. There's lips all the way around the perimeter of the metal, including like the wheel lip here, down in here, um, where it attaches to this core support. In this area, we are gonna make sure all those spots are clean and, um, and as good as we can get them. Then we are going to, well, well, we'll just start with that. Let's get everything cleaned up, both sides, both fenders off, and, uh, and make sure the lips are nice and prepped.
Okay, <clears throat> now that I got these areas cleaned off, I know that this panel can fit flush on those areas that are gonna be um, spot welded. Now that those are all kind of ground down. So the next step is to put this back on and then just kind of see any spots that might need a bit of tweaking because we all know that aftermarket parts are not um, fitting perfect. And a lot of that too is kind of from the factory, like I'm pretty sure factory parts didn't fit perfect either. You always had somebody at the, uh, on the factory, on the assembly line, kind of bumping panels around and stuff to make, make everything fit. Prematurely put on this valence. Stick that up there for now. Now, this thing's fitting pretty good. Kind of the way to tell is, obviously one of them is the door gap. Is the door gap gonna be nice? We're perfect at the bottom. The body lines line up really nice. We're a little bit high with the body line here. I'm not sure that's something that we can do anything about just because it's just the nature of the panel. But I do see that this fender needs to come in because it's jamming up against this hinge and we don't have clearance here. So I'm gonna mark that as a spot that I've gotta work on. You see right there, we're jamming up right against the hinge. So, just need to bring this down a little bit. And over. Now, that will fix our body line here because we're a little bit fat at the top, getting skinny at the bottom. So that'll fix that. Otherwise, it is looking pretty good here. Now the front area might need a little bit more help. I'm just gonna have a look at that now. It actually looks like it should all clamp in pretty nice. So once we've got all these areas fitting and not kind of interfering with each other like, the, uh, like what happened on the hinge here, I'm gonna take the fender off. We're gonna prep those areas with a little bit of weld through primer. And, uh, and that's gonna protect the metal in between the pinch welds that we're gonna spot weld together. So <clears throat> this side looks like I just need to work on this one little corner that will bring it in. It looks like we're not gonna have any other issues really. Um, the other side, I'll have to check that out. There was a little bit of body damage on the other side, so we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, well, we've got a couple of things. We're definitely a bit tight here, so we're gonna adjust that. Otherwise, this does have to pull over a bit to get the front sitting where we want it. That little bit of body damage is up here, but it's actually fitting pretty decent. The other thing that I've noticed is that this lip, this lip is not doing so hot. So I'm probably going to end up <clears throat> jacking up the front of the van, take the wheels off of it, and then uh, gain a little bit better access to that wheel lip there. We'll kind of bump that around and then then I think we're ready to, uh, to coat it with a bit of the weld through primer and start fitting and putting the hood on and aligning.
Okay, so I got most of these spots, well, all these spots, done up with a little bit of copper weld through primer. I find that the copper stuff works a little better than the zinc. Um, that's just me though. Everybody's got their preference. So um, we're pretty much ready now to fit our panel on. I'm gonna touch up with some black in the areas after we uh, get these pieces on, but most important is just that you have this on there and not bare metal in between your weld joints so that number one, you can weld through it and get a decent weld. Number two, so that it protects the metal and doesn't rust in a spot where you cannot coat. This side, I just tapped the lip back. Passenger side, the lip was a little bit mangled, smoothed it all out. Now we can put the fenders back on and, uh, and start actually fitting them. Okay, let's go. We can throw these back on. Now that the paint's dried a bit, just move my lights out of the way. Oh, what am I thinking? I didn't do that edge yet. Well, it is somewhat amazing sometimes what you can get done with some vice grips. I'm just gonna turn this edge over. You might think, oh no, he's gonna ruin the panel. I don't know, maybe. Just wanna get a new crease started right where we said it needs to be. Yeah, I think it's gonna work for us. Trying to balance this thing on my toe so it's in a spot the camera can see. So, Gonna tap this a little bit. Kind of define that edge a little bit more. Massage it over a little. Yeah, it's working. Look at that. Just gotta find something to flatten that out a little bit, but most of most of it is kind of figured out. I heard that. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, that little spot was our, our main concern right here. 
Let's just see what it looks like now. Beautiful, beautiful. Ample clearance. Now this body gap is a little bit nicer. Could go in a touch still to be perfect. Just like that, I think. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna get some clamps on it. Get one up there. Get one down here. This is looking pretty good. Could maybe come down a touch. All right, this is looking pretty good. Yep. Okay, relatively happy with this fender. Maybe it goes in a little more. Yeah, kind of like that. That is fitting pretty good. Okay, let's keep moving. Still a little bit of work to do here, so I'm gonna take this fender off again and just uh, clearance to this hinge a little bit. But overall, it's looking not too bad. Gap's a little bit big there.
It's looking pretty good around the hinge. Got a nice gap in there now. This can be pulled in. The gap is not perfect here, but I don't know that that is something that we can make much better without welding. Sometimes the way that they fold the edges when they're manufacturing, that's just how it is. This isn't going to stay unless I clamp it. Okay, now I'm going to test fit this hood and leave that down. Okay, so it's biting in a little bit here. Definitely needs to go back. So that's looking pretty good. Looks like I'll be able to make a pretty nice gap on this side. Need more clamps. All right, so they're kind of on there. I'm pretty happy with this side, a lot happier than I am with the other side, just because the factory um, looking body lines are all nice in here. We notched that a little bit just with some hammers, but this side fits really, really good. There's gonna be a little bit of um, adjustment here for gap. Now that we've got the hood on, the hood is not totally adjusted either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt down this little, uh, what do you call it? Valence vent. I don't know, whatever that is. And then I'm going to adjust the hood as best I can, um, to line up left and right and gap wise with that. And then we'll try and align these fenders to that hood line, um, while clamping it in a spot where we can. This is an alignment hole, I think a factory one. Um, and then once this is aligned and clamped where I like it, or at least maybe I can use a self-tapper screw or something in uh, some of the spots where we're going to be spot welding. Then I'm going to put on the um, 
the bar, the rad support top bar and hood latch that goes across. Now this is kind of going to bolt and pinch these things together. It does need to go on, um, you know, to bolt onto this bolt and it will bolt there as well as into the fender there, I believe. So that is going to also help us keep everything aligned while we are spot welding our pieces in. So my way of doing it, not everybody's way, but my way is once everything is aligned and I know that all my gaps are good, I will start drilling and welding kind of a spot here and there going around our panels, moving the clamps and just kind of trying to um, get the best welds possible while maintaining our gaps. Okay, you'll notice the camera's floating now. It means Elio's here. Uh, he came and helped me out, just kind of finalizing the fit of all this, helping hold the hood and adjusting and kind of giving me another set of eyes to get as close as we can. Because this is a crucial point, right? We are deciding how these panels will fit for the rest of the van's life. These are welded on, they're not bolted. This is important. So check that out. It actually took quite a while, but this is, a body gap that I'm very happy with. The line to the hood is nice. We've got our bumpers adjusted, so that's all the way down. The latch is adjusted here. That's all the way down. It opens, pops nice, closes nice. Um, we tapped the hood hinges and bent them a little bit. Sometimes the adjustment is hammer and, you know, um, and bending. Like, I just found another set of hood hinges these are another set from, from this van actually. And, uh, and you can tell that they're a little bit bent. These are things from the factory that people um, would have to align to get panels on new cars to fit, right? Guys would, would change the door gaps and, and, uh, and do that kind of stuff. Anyway, this is as good as we can get it. These aftermarket fenders, they don't really want to close in too much more. Um, this is that one spot where we're going to have to pull out a little bit, but you know, this gap is a little bit larger than I would love, but it's totally acceptable um, and as good as we can get it with these panels. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for 100% good enough because perfect is unachievable. <laughs> um, so that is where we're at. Now I am going to drill a few holes where the clamps are and pop in these things called Clecos. I'm going to show you those real quick. Let's... Uh, have a look. Oh, we could, uh, could use a little organizational rundown in this. But these are my Clecos. What are Clecos? Clecos are, oh, there's oil in there. Uh oh, I guess we spilt. Uh oh, air tool oil. Just wipe all the air tool oil on the air tools. Oh, we'll drip it in there. It's dripping, dripping, dripping. <laughs> Don't waste it. But uh, these are Clecos. They are aircraft industry type stuff. Super, super handy for body panels and fitting because you drill a one eighth hole. These are one eighth ones. They come in all different sizes. They come in different styles as well, but you have this Cleco pliers. And basically what's happening is you drill a little hole, one eighth, and then that pops into the hole and it grabs the back side of the hole and then pulls it to pinch a panel tight to another panel. Um, love using them for riveting stuff. That's kind of what they're designed for is riveting aircraft. You put all these in place of where your rivets would be. They hold nice and tight. So I'm gonna put a few of these in and then I'll be able to take my clamps off and, uh, and we'll just keep work, like working our way around, putting these in and uh, drilling our hole, like I said, 5 16 drill bit is what I'm gonna use. When I'm MIG welding, it's nice to have a little bit larger hole 
so that you can, you know, the wire of the MIG welder can go through the hole and actually weld starting on the back panel. So you've got a panel and a hole to spot weld. I want to hit that panel on the back side so that it penetrates and locks it to the front panel. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do now. Just put a couple of these in. We're gonna work our way around and uh, we'll do a bunch of spot welds in real time showing you the technique for getting nice, flush, good spot welds for body panels. You want to set up the top? Okay, another thing that works, that you don't have to use Plecos, not everybody has Plecos, I get that. Um, I use just self-driller, self-tappers. It does the same thing. It's, it drills the hole, it, it will pinch the two together. They're a little bit more finicky, like you don't want to just drive them in or else you'll strip them. But it also helps if a, if a panel is um, not quite touching, like I couldn't get a clamp up in here. And if the panel isn't quite touching, you can run a self drill yourself tapper and I can just kind of feel that it, now, now it touches, right? So that's, it's just another little trick and it is nice to have these pre-drills and the reason being is that when I go to actually weld this, I'm just gonna drill the outside hole to 5 16 and then the inside hole will still be there but because it's a nice fresh piece of clean metal, when you go to line your TIG wire, or not your TIG wire, but your MIG weld up to that, it will have an easier time penetrating and grabbing that back panel.
All right, so we are about ready to weld these on. So, got a, where did I put my drill bit? Just picked up a drill bit for this. Okay, so let's get these things spot welded on here. So basically what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I'm gonna pop one out. I'm gonna drill the first layer. So you see it through to the second layer. It also has the hole still in the center. For guys with just a 110 volt MIG welder, this is the best way to ensure that you are gonna get a good penetration spot weld. I've got a little bit bigger welder. I'm gonna have to turn it down a little bit. Uh, on my Lincoln 175, Miller 180, they're kind of the same. Uh, I'm gonna go 5 and D. More heat is better. If you gotta kind of zap it a couple times, it's okay. The worst thing would be to not get good penetration. Oh, do we not have a good ground here? Make sure your ground is good. So I'm watching my weld and I wanna see it get flat and kind of wet out like this. I'm gonna look at it from the side a little bit. See, it's definitely sunken in. And then we're just gonna keep moving one at a time. There's a little bit of a gap that can't really be helped. Ooh. I'm burning a little bit too much. I might be a little bit hot because it keeps burning the top of that. Turn my welder down a little bit. There we go. Rather be too hot than too cold.
Okay. So, well, I have been spot welding. Elio has been prepping a little bit. Like I said before, we are not getting crazy on how well this is presented, mainly because if the front end was perfect, imagine this front end was like perfect. Okay. How crappy would the rest of the van look? Think about it, think about it. So this front end is gonna be kind of no bondo basically. I might do a little, eh, actually, no, that's fine. Um, there is a little spot here where I'm not sure about. See this sheet metal's kind of dipped in. I might give that just a little, but uh, other than that, we're just gonna prep and paint and hopefully it matches. Uh, let's have a look at the spot welds themselves. Some of them I had to tack multiple times because it was kind of burning, but I'd rather be too hot than too cold. But like, this is an example of like a nicely sunken in weld. It's not very proud. Um, you know, like all these are, are pretty good. That's what you're looking for. You want the weld to wet out and sink in and know that it's super strong. So that's, uh, that's my tips on spot welding. Now I'm just gonna use some 60 grit um, roll lock on a three inch angle die grinder, there it is, 60 grit. The discs I like the best are 3M Cubitron discs. If you look them up, you will find that they are very expensive, but from my experience, not at all sponsored by them, but from my personal experience, these are the best discs out there and they will last three to four times longer than any other disc that I've personally tried. Um, and so they are worth the extra money. They're probably almost double the price, but they are, they cut and they stay sharp. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll probably get every single spot weld down with just one disc, we'll see. Um, and then we're gonna basically just keep prepping and taping so that we can spray this in primer. I'm gonna use some just rattle can self etch primer. And then I've got my color match stuff from Lordco. We are ready to start putting a little primer on. Um, like I said, didn't go crazy far with it. Just having fun with this van. Doesn't have to be perfect. Don't want it to be perfect. So uh, I've just got everything down to 400 grit. That's kind of what I like to use for uh, just to make sure that like, like that's kind of the coarsest you'd want to go and still be able to hide sand scratches with paint. So uh, 400 grit on the DA, went over it. I used a little bit of scotch Bright. went over it. Then I use Final Wipe Solvent. That's what you saw me wipe on afterwards. It's just called Final Wipe. Um, gets any grease, wax, anything like, you know, now you gotta use gloves, don't touch it with your oily fingers kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I'm just got 
this gray one step uh, self etch primer. It's lazy because you don't have to sand it then. You know, you can get a high build primer, which will not be a self etching, or you can get um, self etch primer, which is you don't have to sand it to put on our color. And our color is, like I said before, um, this is like literally mixed for the factory color of this van. So now that the paint's corrected, maybe this will match closely, hopefully. We'll see how it does, but um, yeah, this is actual automotive paint in a spray can. And to help me spray it, because my finger gets tired, I got one of these. Uh, it's called uh, Can Gun One? Can One Gun? I don't know. Whatever it is, <laughs> that's it. And it actually like presses it down for you, makes it feel more like a paint gun. But uh, yeah, that's time to self edge prime. I don't think the paint's mixed well enough. It started coming off with little strings, little tip. If uh, you get something in the paint that you can see right away, you can use the sticky side of tape and usually try and get like a little speck off and then uh, you can sometimes hide it with just a little bit more paint. But I think I didn't quite mix this can enough. It's like a little literal, like a literal piece of plasticky string that came out of there. This might not be any good. I'm putting on the other tip from the other can that was spraying nice. Hopefully. Nature of the beast. But, it's probably gonna be okay. I don't think you'll actually even notice. But uh, yeah, primer's on, went on pretty easy. This little thing worked pretty good. Luckily it's silver under there, so you, it's not really a different color. We'll just see how the paint reacts when it bonds with that stuff. <laughs> I 
Well, now I'm worried I don't have enough paint. I told the, uh, told the person at Lordco how many, like what I was doing for panels. And she thought it'd be enough. So I, I think it'll be enough. I have three cans. That was two cans and I ran out for doing two coats. So hopefully two coats covers it. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to see. Just get Oliver to do one pass with the polisher and that'll be gone. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, that's... I'm thing. not worried about the spray, the overspray kind of dusting. I see what you're saying. It's I'm more about like, 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 It's a little bit, it's a little bit... You like it wasn't some... quite enough paint. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Like, that's yeah. standing up a hair, but it'll go away. Honestly, man, I... Like, this van, it's 100% good enough. Like, mm -hmm. The paint's 40 years old. It's probably a little faded anyway. We're gonna know in a second when we unpack <coughs> this, like how close it is, right? Because we can put the original paint right here. Yeah. And like I've got the door right there. So I, I'm I'm happy with it, honestly. Like yeah, me too. It would have if I had two more cans of paint, I would have tried doing one more final coat right. of like a full wetness. Because mm -hmm. usually when we do a metal metallic paint, like I see. Charlie do it and he's like, you do kind of one really light one, help it stick, another one that's full coverage, but it's the first layer of full coverage and then one final, that sort of just kind of wets everything out. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario, I think three, but I think it looks good. Yep. I think it's gonna be totally fine. Yep. Yep. So, my favorite part. Take off the tape. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's mint. That's actually really close. Yeah, who makes it? Um, uh, what's, yeah, Jenny. Jenny. Yeah. She's a whiz. Dude, I called it. I was like, I was like, God, I need to, this paint and this coach. She's like, we're going to the system. She's like, when are you coming? I was like, uh, take your time. Like, I could come, like, you know, tomorrow or, or I could come, like, later on today. She's like, well, I'm only here until five, so, like, better come right now and it'll be done. Got there, bill was made. She was at the front. It was awesome. That was Oh, so good. That's excellent. It's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty good. Yep. Can you just hold that? Oh, dude, from here? You can't even tell. No, not at all. Just hold that back and just fall for it. Oh, you caught it. Just oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 
probes. Okay. Up it over? Yeah. You want to take it? Yeah, take it. Oh, buddy. So the, this color matches this color. Perfect. Yeah. This color. This didn't get polished. Oh, that's why. That's not polished yet. That's uh, polished. This is polished. Uh, like, it's... it's this polished. is a tiny bit darker. If, I, if I'm gonna... Because we didn't do a full another coat. I think well, that's a tiny bit. There's also the... Like, if this has more metallic in it, then it'll show lighter like that. So True. more coats would lighten it more. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Oh, okay. I also didn't get underneath there. Whatever. But I wasn't pouring it. Who's the fuck on a bed? It's not a show part. <laughs> This isn't Excalibur. <laughs> no, this is not Excalibur. This is 100% uh, good enough customs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a band you can use. Yeah. No, I, this, I said it from the beginning. It's like, this is just like having fun. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, buddy. Alrighty. Oh, look at that. It's so good. 100%. It's so good. All right, well that wraps up this video. I uh, was really stoked with how everything came out. The paint matched pretty good. Definitely needs a carb rebuild. I did chuck a different distributor in it. Didn't really run any better, but, uh, but that's all good. The van is together. I've got the mini bike on the front. This, when I saw this van, you know, when we were trading Excalibur to Keith, I immediately thought about this mini bike. And, uh, and we found these chrome baskets at a swap meet to put it on the front. So, I just kind of like worked all night that one night where we were time lapsing and just got her done. So I'm really happy with it. Um, the van's cool, but we are going to kind of move on. We're going to pick away at this one. It's going to need a little bit, get the sunroofs in it and that kind of thing. But uh, um, we are going to delete the rack off the top. I'm going to delete the ladder. Like what you guys were telling me in the comments, I appreciate the input. And that is what we're going to do. Try and clean it up a little bit on the outside and um, and then that way too, we can get the louvers for the back windows, which I think look really cool. So thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom, everybody. Had a lot of fun this time. Um, I just wanna give a big shout out to a couple of bands that played a party that we had here for some of the Rust Valley guys. Um, it's kinda neat. I'll go into more about it later, 
But um, the Still Spirits, they're a local band, amazing band, put on a great show. We lost power and these guys kept hammering, went full acoustic, singing around tiki torches in the shop. It was amazing, so check those guys out. The other band who I was wanting to see so bad was uh, the Vicious Cycles. They're like a killer punk rock band that uh, loves mini bikes and they just love, you know, partying and, uh, and our good friend Norm on the theremin, he like lit it on fire, he's playing the keyboard, he light, lights his theremin on fire, it was just, what a great night. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for supporting, commenting, loving, liking, sharing. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.